looking for magic carps at flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code lvd for a 15 percent discount on orders over ten dollars while supporting the channel at the same time so first things when trying to kind of build around venifar is that we want to have some sort of venifar pod chain in mind of uh, various mana costs we want to sacrifice and go up the chain of course having a bit of selection at uh, various mana costs to help us solve uh, different problems is nice. We're probably going to be a very creature heavy deck and we're mostly interested in things that have Anthra's Battlefield abilities so we can filter those. So let's start. We probably won't have a ton of one mana creatures but that's okay. Uh, Fibblethip is great at two because if we do search it up with Venifar I believe we get to draw two cards so that's nice. Uh, Cloudkin Seer draws a card, so that's good. Spark Double could be useful. We built a somewhat similar deck with the Yarok deck, where we also wanted a lot of Antro Battlefield abilities. So the two decks are probably gonna be pretty similar. Of course, Agents, Dream Eater. And then could make a case for Sora Eleonora. That's something we don't mind sacrificing. Then at one mana, Grazer, Goose, does seem good. Crawl Harpooner could come in handy. District Guide can fetch up a land. Biogenic Ooze could be fine as kind of a mana sink. Although we will have some other fives with the Cavaliers, so I don't know if we have room for Ooze. I'll add it for now, but I'm probably gonna cut it. Indra could be a reasonable six. Uh, Thorn Mammoth is great. Forerunners is great. Don't know if we'll have enough Elementals for Risen Reef to shine, but it could be a fine addition. Uh, Voracious Hydra could be just a fine card, even though it's not super synergistic with Venifar. Uh, Rolask is great, and I'm probably just going to pray Krasis, just because it's a good card. So that's a good starting point. And then Meteor Golem could be a fine 7-drop too. We're probably going to want some more cheap ramp to get Venifar out a turn early. Probably want another good 4-drop to search up. Lots of good 5s. Yeah, I'm probably going to cut Ooze. Go to sixes, to uh, three sevens and an eight. So yeah, I'm looking for an extra good four drop to potentially sacrifice. Wicked Wolf could be fine. A uh, Neoform is probably fine too. If I play Wicked Wolf, I probably want Oko in the deck too. So let's add both. Don't think I want Dungeon Guys since we typically don't want to sacrifice it. Beast Whisper is on cast and not on Antra's Battlefield. Could still be good enough, but it does get a bit worse with Vanifar, because Vanifar puts them into play right away instead of actually casting them. Of course, Questing Beast and Shifting Ceratops could be fine additions, even though we don't necessarily want to sacrifice those. This is also on cast and not on Antra's Battlefield. I'm probably also going to play Crashing Drawbridge to give Vanifar haste. So yeah, we could play these but we might end up cutting them, we'll see. So let's add the drawbridge and give Venifar haste. Then I'm gonna add some mana creatures. So Incubation Druid, Leafkin Druid, Paradise Druid. And if I'm playing Leafkin Druid and Cloudkin Seer, I can probably play Risen Reef too. And then the Pixie is another good mana accelerant. Could consider the Engineer, don't know if that's necessary. A bit more mana ramp. A uh, Corridor Monitor could be sweet, although the thing about Corridor Monitor is... So the Corridor Monitor is good if you have a lot of 1-mana creatures to sacrifice, because then you can go sacrifice my 1-drop, get a Corridor Monitor, untap Vanifar, and sacrifice my Monitor to get a 3-drop. But we don't actually have a lot of 1-drops in this deck, we just have Grazer and Goose. Now, of course, Monitor also allows you to potentially activate Venifar later, where you just, like, have a random 4-drop, activate Venifar, get a 5, and then use Corridor Monitor from hand to activate Venifar again. So it could be good enough still. Don't mind trying it out. Kiora is definitely a must-have as a way to untap my Venifar. That's definitely better than the, the Monitor, but we could still play the Monitor as well. Stony Strength can untap my creature but that's maybe a bit narrow. And then basically the corridor monitor and that's it. Yeah, Great Henge is uh, probably good enough too, since that's on Enter the Battlefield and not on Cast. And uh, the 4-mana enchantment, I believe, as well. 
So yeah, the Guardian Project should fit in nicely. Whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield, blah blah blah, draw a card. So this seems quite good in our deck where we're searching up multiple creatures in the same turn. So we're currently at 58 cards, but I could easily play one or two extra lands if we wanted to. Although with all the mana creatures, I don't know if that's necessary. Also, the fact we're using Venifar to search up some of these expensive cards means we don't necessarily need to hardcast all of them. Are there any ways to maybe protect Venifar? I guess there's only the one card that gives Hexproof. The Lazata Plating could main deck Veil of Summer, but that's maybe a bit narrow. Yeah, I don't know if I want a Plating. Frilled Mystic is okay. Not like super synergistic with Venifar, since we can only use Venifar at sorcery speed. So it's not like I can sacrifice my 3-drop to counter something, but it is a creature that's also a counterspell. I uh, can also play Once Upon a Time to give us a bit more selection, find those early mana creatures. Yeah, I definitely want a Signet. I guess this is fine, 24 lands, so we don't have to overdo it since we have Venifar and have a healthy mix of different mana costs to search up. Not completely sold on the Crawl Harpooner, I guess. That could be something else. But it is technically like a removal spell that I could search up if I sacrifice a 1-drop. And also a creature that I can maybe play, get a bit of value, kill an opposing Gilded Goose, and then sacrifice to get a 3. Yeah, let's uh, take a look at mana base. So I'm probably okay with Castle Venifar, or uh, Castle Ventress. Uh, Garen Brig is probably pretty good too when we have some of these expensive green cards. Don't think we need Sanctuary. Cabin seems unnecessary. Uh, probably okay with the Simming Guild Gates. Command Tower. Some fetch lands are probably okay just to make sure we have both colors. And that's probably it. Take a look at the distribution, but it should probably be okay the way it is. So we definitely have more green. Right now I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 15, 16 green sources should be more than enough. Still need quite a bit of blue for like Cavalier, so don't want to go too low on the islands. Yeah, Loaming Shaman could be kind of an anti-graveyard card. Maybe cut the Engineer for it. Another option is to play Nissa and not play Sir Eleonora, but this seems okay. Right, let's give this a try. Alright, so we have two lands and a Leafkin. I need to draw a third land to potentially cast Venifar. And then I can play Cloudkin to start sacrificing. So this hand's like a little risky if I don't draw a land or if they deal with a Leafkin. But a Golos deck is probably not going to have too much in the way of answers for my turn to Leafkin. So I guess we'll try. Basically, two draw steps to find a land. Alright, opponent's ramping nicely too, but we do have the turn 3 Venifar, according to plan. And then next turn I could play my Cloudkin, get a 4-drop. I think that's the plan here. I could also play Incubation Druids, get a 3-drop like Risen Reef, since I have another two elementals in hand. I think I'd rather just draw my cards, get a 4-drop, take it from there. Alright, so Cura is nice too, so I can potentially activate Vanifar three times next turn. If I play one more creature, Leaf Kindred makes two mana as well. So, we'll see. Opponent could wipe the board and put me back to the Stone Ages. So hopefully that doesn't happen. I'm okay if they just make some zombies. Yeah, 
We'll get our field of the dead, presumably. That's okay. Alright, that's a nice one. Fabled Passage represents two more zombies. Can play Incubation Druids, then play Kiora, and then I can use Vanifar to sack Incubation Druid and then go from 2 to 3 to 4 to 5 by untapping with Kiora. That's one approach. I guess I kind of want to kill this Golos, but that's going to be tricky because I have the Indric in hand as well. So I guess we'll do that. This can be too bad. So I'll tap this for mana. I guess I'd rather hang on to the Leafkin Druids. Get Risen Reef. Uh, I want to decline since I haven't played land for the turn yet. So this potentially gives me one more mana. Don't think that matters. So now I can sack my Risen Reef, get a Questing Beast, which can attack past the zombies and draws me a card with Cura. So we'll attack first. And then Vanifar. And get, I guess, a Cavalier of Thorns sounds good. The Royals could be okay too, but... And I get to play Crawl Harpooner if I want to as well. Nah, not a bad turn. Yeah, the Harpooner doesn't draw, because it's a trigger that happens afterwards. Ooh, Yarok. Opponents save the Fabled Passage, so they can make even more zombies. Yeah, maybe it was right to hold the Crawl Harpooner. Just wanted to be mana efficient. But yeah, like Crawl Harpooner... I guess it doesn't gain haste from the Forerunners, since it's not from a finale. This is probably fine. And then I can just use a Harpooner to sacrifice and go up the chain, maybe. Although more likely to sack something more expensive. Alright, so what are we doing this turn? I can also play a 6 drop, so I can potentially get two 7 drops. That sounds pretty appealing. So I can get Agent to steal Yarok. And then I can Meteor Golem the Golos. So I want to get that as soon as possible. So I guess we'll start by playing Indrik. Draw and kill a zombie seems fine. Sack my Endric to get agents to steal Yarok. And then I can sack my Cavalier, get a six drop. Uh, put back. I guess it doesn't matter since I'm gonna shuffle here, but I guess I would like the Thorn Mammoth in my library. Sure. Get a Dream Eater. Trigger twice thanks to Yarok. 
and I wanna don't wanna draw the meter golem, wanna search that up. So let's put that last and then draw I guess Loaming Shaman and Fabled Passage with the two Kira triggers. And bound some zombies. Still the same here, since I don't wanna risk milling over the meter golem. And then I can untap another Vanifar. Sack my Dream Eater. And I, I guess Thorn Mammoth is probably better than Golem for now. Triggers twice, fights Golos, find a zombie. Draw some more cards. I guess I can still play a Loaming Shaman, shuffle some cards back. That's actually quite useful here. And we'll fight the Grazer, don't want to fight anything else, otherwise the Mammoth dies. And we'll target ourselves. And we'll put, I think, all the creatures back, or all the good creatures. Yeah, I kind of like the addition of Loaming Shaman in this deck. And then target my opponents. Don't think I put anything back though. Yeah, they can just keep their stuff. Alright, so a lot going on here. But at the end of the day, my opponent lost their entire board. And uh, we still have everything that we want. Now, of course, my opponent could play Sweeper. Instead, it's going to be Agent of Treachery to steal their Yarok back. It's only fair. But this Andre's Forerunners should be enough to end the game, hopefully. All right, opponent concedes. Sweet. Well, <laughs> we got to do what we wanted to here. Triple Vanifar activation per turn, essentially. So, we got to kind of live the dream. Yeah, that was sweet. Do I want to make any changes after that one game? I didn't have a great 4-drop other than Spark Double, but I guess Wicked Wolf could be still a fine one to search up sometimes, just to kill a creature and then we're okay sacrificing it later. There's no amazing 4-drops with great anti battlefield abilities, to be honest. Yeah, I guess Muse Drake might not be the worst just to draw a card. It is a little bit underwhelming, but if we're gonna sacrifice it anyway, it might be better than some of the alternatives. Sagana only draws a card if we have a plus one counter somewhere though, which is not a given. Like we don't have a ton of uh, plus one counters this if we adapt, but that's not guaranteed. Nothing else at two besides maybe Neoform. And then, like, the Spark Double can come with a plus one counter, maybe a Wicked Wolf if we have a food token. Rolask can give a counter somewhere. But yeah, there's nothing, and maybe a Great Henge. But I don't think that's enough for Zagana to consistently draw a card. So yeah, I don't hate the idea of Muse Drake. Could be better than one of these other fours, or I could cut something else for it. Grazer's questionable, since we don't have a ton of lands. Like with 24 lands, a Grazer is not always going to be amazing. But it is a 1-drop that I don't mind sacrificing to get Fibblethip and draw two cards. Yeah, Muse Rig being better than Questing Beast is uh, somewhat questionable. But it is also true that it's only better if Vanifar survives. In which case we're probably doing fine and I don't mind giving up a bit of value. Whereas in the games where we don't have Vanifar in play, where the opponent removes it, I would much rather have a Questing Beast than a Muse Rig, I think. So it's probably okay to have it this way. Alright, let's run it back. If it ain't broke. This hand is lacking blue mana. So that's kind of an issue. But I do have a potentially pretty early Vanifar, which is nice. I guess I'll try it.
because I can sack the Grazer to Vanifar to get a Fibblethip to draw two cards. If I draw an island, then I'll have an additional blue mana in play. Alright, so we're gonna have our turn 3 Venifar. But our opponent does have a very good start too, with a double striking Vindicator and Tajik here. So I don't really want to lose any of my creatures. Could have been correct to just play Questing Beast there and then maybe rely more on playing Great Henge, maybe ramping out Thorn Mammoth instead of going for Vanifar. We'll see. Heartfire. Well, that would have killed my creature regardless. So now I guess I'm okay chomping. This says Trample, so it's not like I prevent more by blocking it over Tajik. So I do have enough mana for Thorn Mammoth, th thanks to Castle Garenbrig. And... Let's see... I'll non-combat damage that would be a lot... So I can actually kill the Vindicator here. Because this is non combat damage, so I gotta kill Tajik. But then the next time I play creature, I can probably kill Vindicator. So I'm gonna take another pretty big hit. If they have a pump spell, I could be dead. Ooh, giant killer. That's pretty rough. Yeah, opponent had a pretty good draw here. I think we're out of options. The giant killer can tap down my questing beast, I can block Vindicator. And then I gotta chomp to stay alive. What can I top deck at this point? I guess like... My Indric or my... Dream Eater could interact with the Vindicator. Maybe I can steal the Vindicator some way. So that's tapped down. And a Legionnaire. So I'm at one. Huh. Well, Cavalier blocks the Legionnaire, but uh don't think that's gonna cut it. I can play Great Henge, but then I'm gonna be short of casting Cavalier. So if this land comes into play untapped. And it's still not enough to play Great Henge afterwards. Yeah, I think we're dead. Because yeah, the Great Henge, unlike Galta, isn't a sum of both, but it's the highest power. So that's five. Probably should have gotten the islands in case we somehow survive and get to play Cavalier. But I think I'm pretty dead on board here. Because my opponent can just tap down... Cavalier with the Giant Killer and the Legionnaire's lethal by itself. Yeah, opponent has the right answers at the right time with the Heartfire and the Giant Killer. Not trivial for a Boros deck to kill four toughness creatures. But these are two perfect uh, answers, basically. Good games. Up against Niv. This is going to be somewhat tricky, as we can expect quite a bit of removal 
if they're kind of the more controlling five color NIF deck. Although the two planeswalkers help. The only problem is I don't have any acceleration, but I guess Vanifar is probably not going to get to untap much anyway, so maybe I just gotta rely on these. And I guess that's not true because Kiora does technically ramp, but it's it's not going to be a turn three. Vanifar is just going to be turn four, even if I miss a land. We'll try it. All right. Guild Globe does fix for mana, but of course not a multicolor spell to draw with Niv. So usually don't see too many of those in Niv decks. Could play the drawbridge. Don't hate that, and then next turn I get to play Vanifar and sag the drawbridge to get a 3. It's kind of nifty. Sadly, didn't have it a turn sooner. Otherwise, we could have curved drawbridge into Kiora, into Vanifar, and then I could Vanifar twice in the same turn. Alright, so next turn I get to play Niv. This turn I get to play Venifar. I think. Are we killing something in response? Oh no, <laughs> the drawbridge. Why? And Rampage to sack my Venifar. That's sad. That's kind of what I meant by the controlling Niv decks. Wow, that's that's a greedy land right there. Field of the Dead in the Niv decks. But uh, they do have the Lantern to fix. Alright, so now what? Don't get to play Vanifar. I can go Kiora plus Oko. That sounds reasonable. I could Elk the Lantern. Let's see, they have a plane. I mean, I guess they have the Guild Globe, so they probably get to cast Nif regardless. But yeah, I could potentially mess up their mana by Elking the Lantern. But for now, I'm going to make a food. Welcome to the feast. I've got lots of four-powered creatures for Kiora to draw me some cards, so hopefully they get to stick around. So they could despark one of my fours. I can elk Niv Mizzets. If I elk the Chromatic Lantern now, then my point would have to float mana in order to still have the spark, and then I could go to my second main to make that floating mana go away. But then I guess I don't get to attack with my questing beast if that was my play. I guess I can Indric fight Niv. And then afterwards turn it into an elk, and I'll have to despark the Indric before I make the Oko decision. Now let's try it. It's kind of a fancy play. Oh, never mind. Yeah, I, I guess we have a castle. Forgot about it. I guess I could have played the Guild Gate then. Alright, so they're gonna despark. Anyway, I'll take action and nothing happens. Yeah, I guess I want to Elk Niv then. So I should have definitely played my Guild Gate instead here. I think we'll be okay. Yeah, not in a great spot. Not going to really be able to... Get this Venifar going against all that removal my opponent has. The, the Ravager Worm kind of adds to that. To 
Right, so if I had my guild get in play, I wouldn't have to use Kira to untap it to play Cavalier of Gales. Could just play Venifar. I guess I like Cavalier, since it kind of lines up better against the Ravager Worm. So I'll begrudgingly use Kiora here. Let's get Draw first before we brainstorm. And two lands can go. Alright, let's pass the turn. And as far as we know, this Cavalier can hold the fort. And then we've got some good options for next turn at least. I think I can just let uh, Kiora take three here. I'm okay with the two loyalty Kiora. Alright, they had an Oath of Kai instead. Could have also finished off Cavalier, but now gets to finish off Kiora instead. Don't have a great attack with the Questing Beasts. I can Dream Eater. Bounce like a zombie. Probably want to do that end of turn to avoid the Clarion. Don't really have enough in play for Forerunners to be great. Or I can just play Venifar. That's also an option. Nothing really that I want to Meter Golem. I think my opponent's mana is fine. I don't think I can mess it up too badly by killing the Lantern. And then I probably want to keep Cavalier on defense still. Now I think I do block, because if they do Clarion then they also lose a lot of stuff. Blocking with Vanifar is bad knowing about Clarion. Yeah, let's do this. And I also don't mind shuffling away this uh, forest. Guess uh, Rollisk is fine. I'm known for my excellent timing. And a Badak too. So they've got basically Vanifar covered for the rest of time. So we won't get to play with our commander this uh, game. If they attack me, then Questing Beast at least kills the fairy, but... Yeah, they're gonna keep the worm back. Let's see how much mana here. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 potentially with Castle. Because we get to kill the fairy while dealing a bit of damage at the same time. Unless my opponent wants to chum block with the Ravager Worm. And I do want to start building up my board so the Andre's Forerunners becomes more effective. We will meet again. Opponent can replay Niv to find a ton of extra cards. But uh, we've got a bit of a better board at the moment. So we'll try and leverage that. Hopefully they don't have more removal. I guess we know about uh, Oath of Kaya. So what do they find this time around? Looks like they have at least two Celestia cards they have to choose between here. Alright, just two, but one's pretty good here. Crisis. And a Faber Alder, which would be a 5-5 with Niv in play. Can just uh, Golem Niv here. Get a pretty big chunk of damage in, and then set up the Forerunners for next turn. If I were to Forerunners now, I guess that wouldn't be bad either. My opponent could double block the Forerunners with Niv and a Zombie. I think I'm just gonna Meteor Golem for now. Up 
go in and take stun. Don't need a goose anymore. Alright, so if my opponent plays just to play a couple creatures, then maybe the Forerunners could be lethal next turn. Especially the Death Touch plus Trample from Questing Beasts being pretty key. They can play Krasis for uh, 8 here, gain 4 up to 15. Don't know if that's enough. It might be. Alright, Oath to kill my Golem, presumably. So that Fairbore Elder is going to be quite large here, just missing a blue permanence at the moment. Don't think I need to sack my uh, food quite yet. 14. I think we're going to be like one or two damage short. But it's probably my best window here. One falls to two. Get to take out Vraska on the way. But they did get rid of my questing beasts. I have a Dream Eater to get rid of a blocker. They couldn't block my questing beasts with the zombies, so... The only way for them to kill my questing beasts is the way they did. Yeah, Vanifar was just watching from the sidelines this game. But it's nice that our deck is capable of winning without our commander. Yeah, Muse Drake probably wouldn't have uh, done quite the same as Questing Beast this game. Gotta hope that the Dream Eater is enough interaction. Draws two, maybe hoping for a Sweeper here. Let's hope they don't find it. Deputy... sure. Well, it's not going to work out great for them. Alright, so a very close game here against the niv Mizzet Reborn deck. Right, let's do one more. This hand could be potentially quite good, as Oko tends to be pretty effective against aggressive strategies. If the Once Upon a Time can find a mana creature, this hand would be ideal, because then I get to have a turn 3 Oko or Vanifar. I think I'll try it. So I do have two one drops that I could find with my once upon a time. So I think I should cast it now. Fibblethub could be fine just as kind of a an early chum blocker. Can maybe turn it into an elk. So my point's probably a more burn-heavy version if they're playing Electrostatic Field. So my creatures are less likely to survive. So we'll see. Now at the moment Castle Vantress comes into play tapped. 
So there was also an argument for just playing a tap land and going Oko into Venifar instead of playing Fibblethub first. Chandra into Torbran is going to be a scary combination too. Just make a food. Then I can jump with Fibblethub to save Oko and then Oko can Elk Torbran. While I play Venifar. The problem with Elking Fibblethip is that it still trades for an elemental from Chandra. So I would rather just have the extra loyalty in the food token at that point. So hopefully Venifar gets to untap. Pretty happy with Torbran as an elk, with my opponent being unable to replay it. And this kind of shows why Oko is such an annoying card to play against when your commander is a creature. You need to have it killed somehow before you can replay it and get access to the abilities. It looks like maybe Chandra can get it back or they have another burn spell. I guess I can spark double and have two Okos. This one? Quite the nibble. Yeah, I don't really get to do anything else, so double Oko it is. So I guess with this one I want a plus two so it doesn't die to the two elementals from Chandra. And with this I want to make an elk. We'll see how this uh, plays out. And then next turn I can play Indrik. Maybe take out the electrostatic field. I should be able to untap with at least one Oko. Ooh, Sarkon. Alright, Sarkon is pretty scary. So that Oko is dead for sure. So I could trade for Torbran, but then I give him the chance of replaying it next turn, which could represent quite a bit of damage. I think, yeah, I think the play is just to block an elemental. Next turn I can use Indric to kill the field, and then my f elk can finish off Chandra, basically. May we meet again. Or not. Yeah, I could also kill Sarkhan if I wanted to. That's also an option, maybe better. Yeah, Indrik seems fine. Let's broaden your existence. Listen to come on. I've got an Indrik to help protect Oko. So we're doing okay. Still have some powerful cards in hand. Still at 22.
Did my opponent already play land? Yeah, they might have uh, accidentally played land already. They definitely would have preferred to have a castle in play. This agent of treachery could just uh, swoop in and steal Chandra. Opponent's it's gonna pack it in, understandably. Well, we got to play a lot with Oko this game. Sadly, Venifar got dealt with. So, yeah, I mean, you heard it here first. Oko is a pretty good planeswalker, as it turns out. But for now, I want to thank everyone for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel. And you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.